Imagine standing on a vast ancient plain surrounded by the prehistoric wild. You're a hunter, a gatherer, and everywhere you look, life is a struggle for survival. For centuries, our human ancestors were small and lean, their bodies shaped to survive harsh conditions and scarce resources, and then something remarkable happens. Humanity grows taller, seemingly overnight in evolutionary terms, with individuals reaching heights never seen before. This isn't just a small change, this was evolution taking a giant leap. So what happened? Why did our ancestors suddenly grow taller? Was it diet, climate, or maybe a mysterious evolutionary factor we're only beginning to understand? Welcome to Infinitia Verity, where we dive into the mysteries of human history, evolution, and science. Today we're tackling one of the most intriguing questions in anthropology. Why did prehistoric humans experience a sudden growth spurt? Stay with us as we explore the science, the genetics, and the mysteries hidden in our ancestors' bones to uncover how and why this remarkable change happened. Ready to journey through time? Let's get started. To understand why prehistoric humans experienced a sudden increase in height, we need to start from the beginning, the dawn of humanity. Our ancestors evolved over millions of years with each generation passing down traits that increase survival chances. But height is a particular mystery because for much of our history, human ancestors were relatively short. Starting around three to four million years ago, one of our earliest known ancestors, Australopithecus afarensis, walked the earth. This species includes Lucy, one of the most famous ancient fossils, and she stood just about three to four feet tall, shorter than a modern child. These early humans were perfectly suited for their environment. They were lean and small with features that helped them survive the African savannas. But fast forward to about 40,000 years ago and we see our direct ancestors, Homo sapiens, reaching remarkable heights. By then, some individuals were even growing over six feet tall. This transformation happened faster than we'd expect from standard evolutionary change, sparking a mystery that scientists continue to investigate. Evolutionary height differences aren't unique to humans. Take, for instance, ancient relatives of elephants known as mammoths. Did you know that the earliest mammoth species were barely the size of modern sheep? Yet over generations, they grew into towering giants that could reach heights over 10 feet tall. Evolutionary shifts in size are common across species, but it's rare to see such rapid changes, especially in humans. Another intriguing point, not all human species grew taller at the same time. For example, Neanderthals, one of our closest evolutionary relatives, had a stockier, shorter build. This body type allowed them to survive in cold European climates where shorter limbs and larger bodies helped retain heat. But Homo sapiens with taller and leaner bodies thrived in warmer environments, suggesting that height might be more than just a product of genetic evolution. The sudden increase in height among Homo sapiens suggests that a unique set of factors was at play, factors that extend beyond standard evolutionary changes and hint at a complex blend of environment, culture, and possibly even social adaptation. One of the first explanations scientists have proposed for this growth spurt is related to diet and the surrounding environment. Early humans had diets based on whatever resources were available. But as they spread across different regions, their diets evolved in unexpected ways, and this dietary shift may have been a key trigger for height increases. In the early days of humanity, our ancestors' diet consisted of whatever they could find in their local environment. They consumed wild plants, fruits, roots, and occasionally scavenged meat from carcasses. Over time, however, humans learned to hunt, significantly increasing the amount of protein in their diet. A high-protein diet from hunting large game like mammoths, deer, and other animals provided essential nutrients that contributed to stronger bones and taller statures. Protein-rich food wasn't just fuel for survival. It was a key ingredient in physical growth, allowing for stronger muscles, more resilient bones, and yes, even increased height. Here's a fascinating twist. Early human communities that lived near coastal areas developed seafood diets rich in omega-3 fatty acids and other nutrients. These nutrients are critical not only for brain development, but also for bone growth. Archaeological evidence shows that these seafood-rich diets may have contributed to more robust physical development in coastal populations. The environment itself plays a significant role in determining physical traits. In colder climates, bodies tend to evolve shorter, stockier builds to conserve heat. 
In contrast, warmer climates encourage taller, leaner builds that help the body dissipate heat more efficiently. This principle, known as Bergman's Rule, helps explain why humans in different climates evolved varying body types and heights. But could diet and climate alone be responsible for this sudden change, or is there something deeper at play? Scientists are finding clues that suggest a much more complex answer. Let's dive into the genetic factors that contribute to height. While diet and environment are significant, genetics offers a key piece of the puzzle. By looking at the DNA of ancient humans, scientists have identified specific genes that likely influenced height changes over generations. Genetic research has pointed to certain genes that directly influence height, one of the most prominent being IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. This gene is involved in bone and tissue growth, and its variants can significantly affect an individual's height. The higher the expression of IGF-1, the more potential an individual has for increased height. Genetic studies show that IGF-1 and similar genes were more active in prehistoric populations that experienced height growth. Populations carrying more of these gene variants were more likely to grow taller, indicating that height had become a selected trait, a characteristic that gave those individuals an advantage in survival or reproduction. The height advantage isn't unique to Homo sapiens. In many species, larger individuals tend to have a better chance of survival and reproduction. In the case of prehistoric humans, taller individuals might have been better hunters or had a more imposing physical presence, making them more likely to attract mates or thrive in competitive environments. This led to a natural selection of genes that supported height growth. Interestingly, genetics alone isn't always the deciding factor. Researchers have found that height-related genes often only express their full potential in specific environments. For instance, individuals with IGF-1 variants who lived in areas with abundant protein sources likely reached their full height potential, while those in nutrient-poor regions remained shorter. This suggests that height wasn't just about what was in our DNA, it was about how our ancestors' lifestyles and environments activated that DNA. Part 4. The Role of Migration, Meeting and Mixing with Other Populations Around 60,000 years ago, humans embarked on a series of migrations that would take them across continents, far from their origins in Africa. This wasn't just a journey through geography, it was also a journey through genetics. As humans spread into new territories, they encountered other hominin species, such as Neanderthals in Europe and Denisovans in Asia. These encounters weren't always hostile. In fact, evidence suggests that they were sometimes intimate, hybrid vigor, and interbreeding. When two distinct populations interbreed, they introduce genetic diversity into their offspring, a phenomenon often referred to as hybrid vigor. This diversity can lead to new, sometimes advantageous traits as the genetic mixing introduces variations that might not have existed in isolated populations. Genetic analysis of modern humans has revealed that certain populations carry DNA from Neanderthals and Denisovans, with particular genes influencing traits related to immunity, skin adaptation, and even height. This genetic mixing, scientists believe, may have introduced height-related genes into Homo sapiens populations, contributing to the gradual increase in height seen across prehistoric societies. Interesting fact number seven. Neanderthals were not always short. Despite popular belief, not all Neanderthals were significantly shorter than Homo sapiens. While generally stockier and more robust, some Neanderthals were quite tall, especially those adapted to warmer climates. These height characteristics were passed down in certain lineages, and it's believed that interbreeding with taller Neanderthals may have transferred height-enhancing genetic markers to Homo sapiens, giving them a height boost. Interesting fact number eight. The Denisovan legacy in modern humans. The Denisovans, whose remains were found in a cave in Siberia, also had genetic variations that may have influenced height and body size. Interestingly, some modern human populations, especially in Southeast Asia and Oceania, carry a significant percentage of Denisovan DNA, which could have contributed to larger body sizes and more robust bone structures. Through these exchanges, humans didn't just inherit a few genes, they inherited physical traits that could have helped them survive in challenging new environments, including potentially genes that influenced height. 
Part 5 Social and Cultural Factors The Impact of Lifestyle Changes Height evolution wasn't driven solely by genetics and environment. Cultural shifts also had a significant impact. Around 10,000 years ago, a major lifestyle change revolutionized human existence, the transition from hunter-gatherers to agricultural societies. This new way of life brought about stable communities, reliable food sources, and unique challenges, all of which played a role in shaping human height, settlement, farming, and nutrition. The shift to agriculture meant that humans could settle in one place and grow their food rather than constantly moving in search of sustenance. Early farmers relied on crops like wheat, barley, rice, and maize, which offered reliable sources of carbohydrates but lacked the diversity of nutrients found in a hunter-gatherer diet. Surprisingly, archaeological evidence shows that the first farming communities experienced a temporary decline in height. Why? Early agriculture wasn't easy. Farming required hard labor, and the lack of dietary variety led to nutritional deficiencies. Studies of skeletal remains reveal that many early farmers were shorter than their hunter-gatherer ancestors, likely due to malnutrition. However, as agricultural practices improved and humans began to domesticate animals for milk, eggs, and meat, their nutrition improved. Over generations, farming societies saw a return to taller statures, aided by a more stable food supply and a diet that included more proteins. Interesting fact number nine, height as a social advantage. Height began to carry social implications as well. In many ancient societies, taller individuals were often associated with strength, leadership, and power. Research suggests that this association may have led to a cultural preference for height, with taller individuals potentially having greater opportunities to reproduce, further contributing to the height increase over generations. Interesting fact number 10, social class and height. Anthropologists have discovered that even within agricultural societies, social class affected height. Wealthier individuals had access to better food and could avoid the intense physical labor of farming, leading to a correlation between social status and height. This pattern is still observable today in some societies where better access to nutrition and healthcare is linked to increased height. Through these cultural dynamics, we see how height wasn't just a physical trait, it became part of the human social fabric, influencing survival and status in ways that were complex and often invisible. Part 6. The Mystery Continues Unsolved Questions and Theories Despite advances in genetics, anthropology, and archaeology, questions about the sudden increase in human height remain. Height evolution is a complex story with several missing pieces, and each new discovery seems to open up even more questions. Here, we'll examine a few ongoing theories that scientists are currently exploring. Theory 1. Unknown Genetic Factors While scientists have identified several genes that contribute to height, many believe that undiscovered genes may also play a role. Height is considered a polygenic trait, meaning that it's influenced by multiple genes acting together. Recent studies estimate that over 700 genetic variants may affect height, but many of these variants are still poorly understood. The possibility of an unknown height gene or even a genetic switch that activates in response to environmental factors is an exciting prospect for researchers. With advancements in genetic technology, scientists may one day identify these mysterious genetic factors and explain more precisely why certain prehistoric populations experience sudden growth spurts. Interesting fact number 11, regional height variations. The average height of ancient populations varied significantly by region. For example, prehistoric Europeans tended to be taller than those in the Middle East and Asia, where early agriculture required adaptations to different climates and resources. Fossil evidence from different regions shows that human height was anything but uniform, suggesting that localized environmental pressures shaped each population uniquely. Interesting fact number 12, modern height trends and environmental influences. Even in modern times, height continues to fluctuate due to environmental, dietary, and social factors. For instance, the Dutch are among the tallest people in the world, a phenomenon attributed to their nutrient-rich diets, healthcare advancements, and even selective mating for height. This highlights that even today, height is a dynamic trait influenced by a complex blend of factors. The regional and environmental variations in height seen in prehistoric and modern populations underscore how sensitive height is to external factors. 
reminding us that evolution isn't a one-size-fits-all process. Conclusion, where we stand today. And so we arrive at the end of our journey through the mystery of human height evolution. Thanks to breakthroughs in genetics, anthropology, and archaeology, we have a better understanding of the forces that contributed to the height increase in our prehistoric ancestors, from dietary shifts to environmental adaptations, genetic variations, and social pressures, it's clear that height is a multifaceted trait shaped by more than one factor. But like many areas in science, the story is far from complete. Questions about the exact role of genetics, the impact of interbreeding, and the influence of ancient diets are still being investigated. And with every answer, new mysteries emerge, leaving us with a constantly evolving picture of our past. Our journey from small, adaptable beings to taller, more resilient humans is a testament to the adaptability and resilience of our species. A story written in our bones and carried in our DNA, thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey into the evolution of human height. If you enjoyed exploring this mystery with us, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to stay updated with more mind-expanding content here on Infinitia Verity. What other mysteries of human evolution would you like us to uncover? Drop your suggestions in the comments, and as always, stay curious.